Hey guys, I'm gonna do an unboxing on this uh, Panasonic 1200 watt stainless steel microwave oven from Costco. And uh, first I wanna say though, um, we've got a new app out. It's called PalTap, P-A-L-T-A-P. And it's a way to, uh, to get a hold of me if you wanna talk to me directly. And then just download the PalTap app and you can get a hold of me and uh, it'll be a live chat. All right, so. Go ahead and take this baby out of the box. It comes with the uh, owner's manual here and then also some important instructions. It just tells you to remove the tape on the inside of the doors before you use it. And that's these two pieces right there. All right, this thing sits 12 inches off the table. There. And it's uh, about 20 and 3 eighths wide. 20 inches and 3 eighths, so just shy of 20 and a half inches as far as the depth on it. It's uh, almost 14 and 3 quarters, just short of 14 and 3 quarters of an inch. And then here, there's a film right there, take off, and then let's just put it right in, right in the wall there. All right, just to start with the basics, here's how you open and close it. Just push this button right here. Here's the dimensions for the cooking area. So just over nine inches that way. And then about 13 and a half inches this way. Hey, this microwave needs to be grounded, so make sure that when you're plugging this in, you don't remove the ground, and also you don't use an adapter. It needs to be grounded. Right, so right after you plug the thing in, you want to go ahead and you're going to want to um, get the adjustment for grams and kilograms for ounces and pounds. Uh, here in the U.S., I'm going to go ahead and use uh, ounces and pounds. So I'm going to go push start and then cooking timer to cycle between the two. And actually, if I wanted it to grams to kilograms, I'd push cooking timer to switch it back right there. Okay, now uh, you can access the sound off or sound on function of this, and to do that. You're going to want to go ahead and press start and then uh, we'll press that twice after we do the plug-in so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's try it without unplugging it first so there's the beep so you can either have a beep or not a beep and then the cooking timer again will there's beep on beep off so you just leave the sound silent if you want there's the beep on or off again. It cycled the start button and the cooking timer. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna leave it. Leave it on for right now. Yeah, we set the clock on this thing. What you want to do is go ahead and push clock set. And then you just use the numbers on the pad to, to put what time it is. There we go. Clock is set. See here, I've set the child lock on this thing. Well, what this will do with the child lock engaged. That's how you know it's on. You keep the kid from coming up. You can still open the thing. It'll keep them from coming and operating it. It won't operate. So the trick to turning this on and off, to turn it on, I press the start button three times. To turn it off, to disengage the child lock, three times here. One, two, three. See, now it's back to normal. To set it, start button three times. One, two, three. Child lock is on. Turn it off. One, two, three. Right now for cooking, this thing has 10 different levels of power you can you can use. Myself, I just use it on high power. Um, and so, but to adjust that, you just go power level right there. This is just for starting out cooking. But if you want to just use the high power like me, you can just go power level. Now you're at power level 10. 10 is the highest, 1 is the lowest. All right, to adjust the power levels, you push the power level button. The default is power level 10, which is what I'm going to use. I just leave it at 10. But if you want to adjust your power levels, you can just adjust it right there. Actually, uh, they come with some recommended settings for, for power levels. They recommend uh, power level 10 for reheating fluids. And then for reheating foods, they actually recommend power level 7. Now for defrosting, they say to use power level 3, which is medium low. Defrosting power level three. Okay, this thing has stage function uh, cooking, so you can cook at a real high level for a little bit, cook at lower level for a little bit, a little bit lower for a little bit. You get a maximum of three, so you adjust that while you're cooking, and then uh, you can you can just hit the hit the power level button to do that. I'm not going to use that function, 
but it's an option for you. This thing's actually got a lot of functions. You can actually even uh, set a delayed start if you want. I'll show you how to do so that. To set a delayed start, you want to start with your cooking timer button. So there's your cooking timer, so right there. And now you're going to want to set a time for how much later uh, you want to you want to cook. Uh, enter the desired delay time. So let's go. We want to cook this uh, in 10 minutes. We'll press our power level to the desired level that we want. Let's go power level 10. And you set the cooking time now um, using the using the number. So how long do we want to cook this? Well, we want to cook it for four minutes. Okay, so it's going to start in 10 minutes at power level 10 and cook for four minutes. Now we can go ahead and push start. You'll notice that it's got a countdown. Pretty cool. All right, many recipes call for a standing time once cooking is done. So in order to set the standing time after here following cooking, Press power level, how many minutes you want, five minutes. Now for cooking timer, now we'll push the timer after we set how much time we want to cook. And you're gonna get up to 99 seconds. So we're just gonna go 30 seconds here. So now it'll stand for 30 seconds after the five minutes. Okay, you can also uh, jog this thing up in 30 second increments. So you put your coffee in there and you only want 30 seconds. You go quick 30 right here, start. I think I want 30 more seconds. Tack 30, 30 more seconds on there. Start getting down, you're like, nah, uh, I want to go 30 more seconds. So you can do that, you can do that up to five minutes. Popcorn is so popular, they have a special function for it on microwaves. So there's three levels here, and to adjust those levels, so I'm just going to show you the, um, for popcorn here. So popcorn, so you press that till the desired size appears on the display. You press it once for 3.5 ounces, twice for 3 ounces, and three times for 1.75 ounces. So look at your popcorn package, and that will determine how many, how many times you push that button. And you just push start. Popcorn popping instructions. You only pop one bag at a time. And place the bag in the oven according to the manufacturer's rec directions. Usually that's like face down so the thing can open up, open wide. You don't want to put it so the flaps are down, so it's kind of constricting. Uh, start with the popcorn at room temperature. Uh, you want to allow it allow it to sit when you're done popping it. Of course, open it carefully. The steam will escape. We all know about that. Don't reheat uh, popcorn, unpopped kernels. Uh, if the popcorn is different than the weight listed, follow the instructions on the popcorn package. Of course, never leave it unattended. And then, uh, you know, don't overcook it. If you notice the popcorn starting to really slow down, stop it. And then if, if you're uh, if you're popping one right after the another, the cooking times may vary. All right, here's the turbo defrost. This will allow you to defrost any meat or whatever else you want. So you want to go turbo defrost, and you'll enter the weight of the food in there. And of course, ours is ounces and pounds. So um, let me just go start. There we go. This is actually pretty nice. They give you some uh, defrosting tips and techniques. So screenshot this uh, if you're if you're looking for some defrosting tips and techniques, or if you purchased this thing already, uh, keep this keep this next to your microwave for auto reheat. Right, you can just go push the auto reheat button, and then if you've used this a few times and you want to, you know, you want to go, uh, you can. This allows you to fine tune it. So it starts at nine. If you wanted to go twelve. Or 15 there's three different set of uh, four different settings um, so that's usually for one serving two servings three or four servings we'll just go one for now just by pushing that button but you might go okay I want a little less than that just push the less the less button you go oh man well maybe I want a little bit more so there's back to nine there's plus one so then you can go ahead and start it Here's some tips on when not to use the uh, auto reheat. Of course, uh, you know, raw or uncooked foods, you know, really you don't want to put that kind of stuff, uh, raw foods in there anyway. All these foods should already be cooked. Um, they say don't reheat bread and pastry products. Use the manual power and time for these kind of foods. Uh, if the cavity in there is warm, uh, and also for beverages or frozen foods, don't use the auto reheat. Okay, in the directions here, it's kind of nice. This comes with the auto cook chart. And so I'll kind of scroll slowly through this just so you can use it for a reference if you've happened to lost your owner's manual. But this gives the uh, auto cook settings. You've got beverages, pizza, potatoes, 
even gives you some some uh, tips on on how to cook it you know even the potatoes piercing the potatoes before you you uh, with a fork before you put it in there frozen veggies even gives you some tips on washing them thoroughly dinner plates how to arrange those fresh veggies and then uh, frozen entrees too so good uh, good tips here and they even give you a little give you a little recipe for an omelet here and, and how to cook it exactly so that's kind of nice you can even use your microwave as a as an oven timer so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, reset it and then to set the to set it as a timer you just want to push cooking timer on here and cooking timer is right here there's cooking timer and you put how long you want to do it how about four minutes or 40 minutes start now you can just use this as a timer for whatever you need, and it'll beep when it's done. All right, in the owner's manual here, they give some food characteristics and how they pertain to uh, to microwaving. It's kind of neat. Even just take, for instance, they, uh, they list uh, steak or meat and bones, and it talks about how the meat uh, and the bone uh, react and uh, absorb the microwave energy. It talks about large amounts of fat absorbing microwave energy, and the meat next to these areas may overcook, so... It's kind of interesting, something to think about, but um, I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but it even has some cooking techniques again, browning as far as spacing, testing for doneness. It even goes on to cover uh, temperatures for food and uh, when, when you know that they're done. Of course, you're gonna wanna get a food thermometer to test each one of these out and stick it in there. Okay, now for cleaning this thing, you're just going to want to use a damp cloth out here. You don't want to use anything with any abrasive. It'll scratch all this up. So just a damp cloth. Same with this here because you'll just, you'll deteriorate this. It'll mess up your shine on your microwave. The inside's a little bit different here. You can be a little more, uh, you know, a little more uh, rough with the, with the surfaces. You could use a little, a mild abrasive in here. This thing's, this thing's also dishwasher friendly. So if it gets too nasty, which hopefully it doesn't. Put it in the, wash it up and put it in the dishwasher. And those three dots just kind of sit over the center of that there. Make sure you have your roller ring on there that allows it to, to rotate. And this is the, there's a little motor in here and that's what makes this thing spin. This thing is just to guide the plate. You can actually run that to the clip as well. So it just comes out of that styrofoam. When you do decide to set this thing up, uh, you want to kind of be smart about it. One of the things that you might not readily realize is you don't want to put it in an enclosed area. Obviously, start with the basics. Make sure it's flat. Make sure you're putting it on a flat surface, something that's stable, like a countertop. But definitely don't don't box it in. Uh, what will happen is it needs to, it needs to it needs to vent. And so you see this vent back here. That can't be blocked. And if you enclose this thing, it'll it'll overheat. It won't allow it to vent. There's a vent on the back that I just showed you. Also, when you're cooking, there's a vent right in here too. Uh, those things cannot be blocked. So um, don't 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 build a, a tight box for it. And also, this is just made for for um, household use. Um, and you won't don't want to use it in your RV or a boat or anything like that. It's not built for that. All right, this is kind of nice. It's got a cookware guide. Uh, this kind of gives you the list of uh, things you can put in there and things not to put in there. Uh, and if you don't know it already, do not put anything metal in there. Don't put aluminum foil in there. Sometimes you might have dishes that have like uh, gold trim or silver trim around there that are metallic. Don't put those in there. It'll cause arcing and it'll cause your microwave to malfunction. But uh, yeah, so this kind of gives some precautions and and, uh, and what you can use. So don't put brown paper bags in there either. Uh, you can use browning dishes. Don't put aluminum foil. You can use some microwave safe, uh, anything, you know, look for the label, make sure it's microwave safe. Uh, of course, your, your disposable containers. You don't want to use uh, these fast food cartons with the metal handle again. Uh, no metal, anything metal or metallic like in there, don't use it. Frozen dinner trays are good. Glass jars, uh, most of the glass jars, like they say, are not heat resistant. So you wanna use a microwave safe uh, glass jar. Don't just put a cup in there, it'll it'll crack. Uh, no metal bakeware, no metal twist ties. You can use uh, oven cooking bags. I know sometimes, uh, you know, think about uh, oven cooking bags for hot wings, that kind of stuff. Paper plates and cups are okay. Uh, don't put any styrofoam in there. 
Um, you can use uh, you can use plastic foam cups, but uh, they will melt. I've, I've melted them before. And they'll just burn a hole right in the side, and uh, they can ignite. So be real careful when you're using that. Uh, plastic wraps, okay. You know, use that to uh, cover up some broccoli or some cauliflower. Make some of that. Some veggies in there. Some steamed veggies. Uh, you can use the wicker in there. It'll kind of, you know, sometimes you might use that to steam things. And then uh, wax paper's all right. Of course, thermometers, they're metal. Don't stick them in there. Hey, guys, I really appreciate you watching my video. Please like and subscribe. All right, go get this puppy at Costco. Take care, guys.